Welcome back to the Military History and Strategy channel. Today we will be taking a look at the MiG 1.44 NATO designation flat pack experimental fifth generation stealth fighter and what it tells us about the Cold War arms race in the air. The MiG-1.44 was an aborted Soviet and later Russian Federation project to create a fifth generation stealth fighter. The program began in response to the United States Advanced Tactical Fighter Program which would later produce the F-22 Stealth and Air Superiority Multi-Role Fighter. The Soviet Union ordered an urgent initiative to produce a comparable fighter, one with super maneuverability and stealth capability. The MiG-1.44 made use of lighter composite alloys in the airframe and radar absorbent materials, with also the shape of the engine intakes and wing tips adjusted to decrease their radar signature. Interestingly, the 1.44 may have employed the use of plasma stealth technology. This is where a cloud of gas is ionized around the aircraft to significantly reduce its radar signature and perhaps also reduce drag. If this is all accurate, the 1.44's stealth profile gave it a radar cross-section comparable to that of the F-22 Raptor at just 0.3 of a square meter. But this is to be taken with a pinch of salt. Because whilst there are some features that would lower its radar cross-section, there are others that would increase it. The canards, which are the smaller winglets towards the nose, are a big one. Canards are generally quite unstealthy as it adds additional surfaces to the aircraft, which in practical terms means there is more surface for a radar signal to return from. The same can be said for those external pylons. The F-22 has internal weapons bays precisely for this purpose. However, it must be noted that the Lockheed F-35 has removable external pylons, so this may have also been the case with the MiG-1.44. And according to open source analysis, an internal weapons bay was the intention. It was powered by two Saturn AL-41 engines, like the ones used on the early prototypes of the Su-57, and could reach a speed of Mach 2.35 with the ability to supercruise. It had thrust vectoring nozzles which aided in supermaneuverability, and was kitted out with advanced radars and avionics. In the early 1980s, Soviet intelligence discovered that the United States was developing the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, which would later produce the F-22 Raptor. In response, the Soviet government initiated an urgent program to construct a fighter capable of taking on the F-22, and so began the design phase for the Soviet fifth generation air superiority stealth fighter. A list of operational requirements was handed to the McCoyan Design Bureau in 1988. Final approval of the McCoyan design came in 1991, with construction of the prototype beginning later that year. But this took place just as the Soviet Union was collapsing, and when it finally did collapse, the MiG-1.44 project funding was all but cut off due to the crippling financial crisis the now Russian Federation was undergoing. The 1.44 was eventually postponed in favour of modernising the Sukhoi Su-27 flanker. In 1994, the prototype was eventually completed though. It undertook perhaps only two test flights, both of which were successful, but shortly afterwards the program was postponed yet again. The distinct lack of funds and the astronomical costs associated with stealth fighter projects was just not something the Russian Federation could afford at that time. In 1999, an effort was made to revive it yet again, but the program was permanently terminated shortly thereafter in favour of the Sukhoi Su-57 stealth fighter. But there is much speculation that some of the technology and data learned from the MiG-1.44 project was procured by the Chinese and found its way into the Chengdu J-20. But what does the story of the MiG-1.44 tell us? It underscores the race to develop better aircraft than one's enemy. And this very race has been in existence almost since the advent of military aircraft in early World War I because it was discovered early on that whoever has the best aircraft and in enough numbers can control the skies, and whoever controls the skies largely controls what happens on the ground. Because aircraft no longer on counter-air operations, in other words not destroying enemy air assets, can go about other tasks like attacking ground targets, such as tanks, troops, artillery emplacements, communications hubs, convoys, roads, bridges, and on and on. 
If you do not have air superiority or air supremacy, the war will become all but impossible to win. Of course, one of the finest examples of what you can do with air supremacy is the 1967 Six Day War. Here, Israel destroyed the Egyptian, Jordanian and Syrian air forces in the first morning of the conflict in a stunning surprise attack. With the Israeli aircraft no longer concentrating on enemy airfields and aircraft, they then went about annihilating Egyptian, Jordanian and Syrian units on the ground who were then without air cover. And because the Israeli Air Force had control of the air, the Israeli ground units could then fight the war on their terms and win. So in a conventional war, control of the air is vital. Which brings us back to the MiG-1.44. And in this Cold War context, if the United States possessed an air superiority multi-role fighter invisible to radar, then it would control the skies in a potential conflict between the two nations, and the Soviet Union would eventually lose, hence the urgency to develop aircraft such as the MiG-1.44. Okay, that wraps up our analysis on the MiG. Apologies for the limited footage and stills of the aircraft, but there just wasn't that much material out there to work with. But I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, and I will see you in a few days for my next video. Until then, everybody, stay safe.